Hello, I'm Robin and welcome to Molten Modular. Today, or rather this evening, there's an EMOM in Norwich. <laughs> One that I've been trying to get to. I've been trying to get to an EMOM for months, ever since Synth East back in March. I've been trying, trying and trying to get one. Trying to get there to do a performance, to take some modular, to, to risk everything out there in the real world, performing to real people in a real pub, in a real town. That's the idea. I, I, I'm really into the idea. I love the idea and I love doing it. it. Scares the hell out of me, but it's an exciting, sort of thrilling, challenging thing to do. And often it, it creates this sense that you are in the right place. You are doing the right thing and that there's potential for awesomeness. Not only in your expression of yourself, but in the expression of the machine, of the synthesizer. And so I'm trying to get to one tonight. What's stopping me? Well, everything stops me. Everything. Everything. So I've kind of gone, sod it, I'm not going to do anything else today. I'm just going to work on bringing together a bunch of modular in order to perform for 15 minutes tonight in Norwich. That's the plan. <laughs> That's the plan. I could not be less prepared. But hey, what I thought I'd do is I'd, I'd film this uh, just to show how an idiot like myself tries to prepare for a live performance. Now I know. I know. Let's bring this in a little bit. Now I know the right that, that what I should be doing, I should be practicing. I should be sorting my hair out because it's all fluffy. And I should be honing my craft so that I can pick up my live rig and just play a blinder at any moment, at any time. That would be lovely. That's not me, however. That's not, that doesn't tend to be how I operate because my, my rack is, is evolving and changing as, as new modules come in, as I build new modules or find new modules or buy new modules or add them to it. It's this constant changing, shuffling vibe of <laughs> never-ending dissatisfaction that I'm trying to 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 rein in and deal with and produce something creative from. So what you'll hear if you come along tonight is not a practiced honed performance. It will be a man with his modular trying to make sense of the world. And I believe there's something beautiful and unique in that. Well it will be unique without a doubt. <laughs> That's a given. That's a given. So, so what am I going to do exactly? Well, I mean, I've had a few ideas. And since the live stream on Sunday night where I played with a couple of things, I definitely want to try to use those live. So here's my thinking so far. In previous EMOMs and also at Synth East, I used my double, double case rack brute clamshell kind of thing where I have four rows of modular, lots to play with, lots to choose from, Whereas this time around, I've set myself a different limitation. The reason for this, there is a practical reason I'm not just messing myself about, because one of the reasons why I've not been able to get to EMOMs over the last six months is that I just can't get there. I have other things to, to do. I've got kids to get to different places and pick up from different places. And so the car is in use. And in order to get a big load of modular to Norwich, I would need the car. So I've resolved to use my motorbike. But I can't carry a twin rack brute monster on the back of my bike. I just can't do it. So I've decided I can do it if I take just one case. And these Bifaco cases are brilliant because they're slightly bigger than the rack brute ones. I've also got this one U row, which is going to provide some extra utility that I'd have to use up space for otherwise. It has a built in output module and outputs out the back, which is going to make it easier to plug in to the rig at the pub. It also has a lid that can go over while it's still patched and it will fit in my uh, analog cases backpack. So all of these things mean that I can get on the bike, take my rig, turn up in Norwich 20 minutes later and play. That's something worth pursuing, I think. And then, I mean, I really like the idea of having a single case to do other things with, to take it about, to get out there in the world, to run it off a battery and record myself playing in nature. That's also a fabulous thing, I think. So all of this rambling is bringing me to the point where I've got to fill a case with the right stuff 
that I can amuse myself and perhaps other people with for 15 minutes. Can I do that? Is that possible? <laughs> I don't know at this stage. I don't know. But here's my plan. No, no, there's no plan. <laughs> I'm just going to talk about it as I'm putting stuff in and out. I'm going to try to put the right modules into it and then I'm going to work with it to see if I can come up with something interesting to play. So I'll try to talk about that as I do it, as I pull things out and put things in, and I'll try to cut out all of the uh, stuff that's less interesting and all the yawning bits of time while I'm scratching my head and see if this will be a useful prep, preparation, putting together, thought process video for you people out there. So I'm going to focus in on this here rack here. This is ultimately going to be what I'm going to be using and already has the majority of things that I think I might need. So playing around on Sunday evening, I really like the Endless Processor. I think that's got some interesting uh, things it can do. So that hopefully is staying. The PolySeq, this thing here, I'd like that to stay. And I'm going to spend some time this afternoon trying to come up with sequences to fill it with that I can then use in the performance that's that's definitely an idea that's definitely something that i think could be awesome so i don't then have to to stick a massive sequencer in here or bring an extra one along although i also appreciate that not having a sequencer means that i don't have a sequencer to play with i can't just generate something on the fly although i may still do that you know the variegate 4 plus here may stay I don't know, but it's it's one of those modules which can be incredibly useful because it can do all sorts of things, you know, very much off the cuff. The other thing that I don't really have is mixing. I mean, previously I've got that nice chunky feedback mixer, six channels of lovely crunchiness, but there's no room for that. Now I have a motion meter here. Now this can be a four channel mixer. So that's a possibility. I've also got the, uh, the Aikido over here from Bastol but I found that really difficult to use. <laughs> so I don't know, but it could be a little four channel mixer and maybe these two, these two together might be enough. So that makes me think maybe I need to decide how many voices I'm going to be using. So at the moment, sound sources in this particular case, I've got the pizza, I've got the honor, I've got the Castor and Pollux, got the acronym, I've got the Surface and the Pony VCO. It's far too many. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six. Six sources of sound. No, that's, that's not what we're going to want. And I haven't even added percussion yet. So the first thing I can do is calm that down. I mean, the Custer and Pollux is, is lovely, but it's big, taking up a lot of space. Uh, the pizza brings a lot of difference to it because of its FM quality. So I really want to keep that. The Honor has been one of my favourite oscillators just because it's it does what it says that it does. The acronym is actually perhaps more interesting because it has these other elements that I can bring in. So I've got the feeling in my head that the acronym is going to form the basis of a sort of a running melody which can change and evolve. So that, I think, is going to going to stay. I've been getting into 2140 filter, for mainly because, to start with, my wasp filter died, this fella, and I do need to, to get a, a chip replaced on that. But otherwise, all the filters I have are really big. Like the Jove is a massive thing. The, uh, the Instruo Traeger I've got is a, is a big filter. And I, you know, I've got the Polyvox here, again, quite a large, filter and so i'm finding myself actually needing to probably look for some smaller smaller less luxurious filters might not be a bad thing so maybe keep these two filters maybe keep the pizza and the honor maybe use the pony vco rather than the honor if i'm going to need the space the surface brings in some different tombras so that's that's good to keep so if i'm going to look at four perhaps voices the acronym the pizza, the honor, and the surface. But I also would very much like a bunch of percussion. Now, I thoroughly enjoyed the Making Sound Machine Stolper Beats and Trinity from Modbap combination on Sunday night. 
So I might try to squeeze that in. But whatever I do, it's going to be a lot of stuff. So let's just see what I can readily get rid of. I mean, I can get rid of this kick drum if I'm going to be using the Trinity. Maybe that's a good thing. Or I could use the Maelstrom plus the uh, Pico drums. And that gives me three drum sounds as well. But perhaps Trinity is going to give me the the editing and changing on the fly, the interest of changing the sounds around that uh, something like the Pico drums does not, although the Mandrake does. <laughs> so I think, I'm, I mean, I'm going to have to start being brutal. So I'm going to take out the Castor and Pollux and the Mandrake. I'm going to take it out. Oh, I don't know what else. <laughs> Well, let's take out those things as a start. And then that perhaps gives me some space up here. I could relocate some other things. If I put sound sources at the top, percussion at the bottom somewhere. Does that matter? I don't know. I'm going to have to do something. I'm going to have to do something. So I can't just waffle. I'm going to have to get on with it. So let's start taking things out. Now, I've really enjoyed the Endless Processor so far. I don't fully understand it yet, and I haven't really delved into the manual. So hopefully this afternoon I can find out a little bit more about it and use it perhaps more effectively. Now, to get the Stolper Beats in, that's a heavy, that's a heavy thing. That's a heavy thing. <laughs> that's a big chunk. Now, I can see my little sequences here, which are very useful. Maybe, hmm, <laughs> I do not know. Let me take the Oct out. Now the thing with a Pony VCO is that it's so deliciously small that it could free up some space. So I'm going to sacrifice the honor for this fella. And I should remember not to put nearlies into everything every time. See, that's now giving me room to put the surface up there. Now, I've really enjoyed the Vino Echo. It is a bit wide, but it offers quite a lot, not just echoing, but also sort of strange warbly sounds, uh, pitch shifting, cross modulation, that kind of thing, some drive. It's quite nice, quite interesting. So I'm trying to retain that. Uh, the Amelia envelope from Expert Sleepers is excellent. It's probably my favorite envelope, um, you know, but it's only doing the one thing. Whereas I've got the Quart here, which is a potentially four envelopes or a couple of envelopes plus some LFOs. So again, that really does uh, make use of itself. But hey, let's see if we can keep both of those. I do have some low pass gates in one U, which could potentially go in here. So I'm going I'm going to keep PAMs because it may still offer things. I don't know. I might start taking the clock of everything from the Stolper beats. Let's keep that in play, as well as my motion meter here, which could be useful in either mixing or messing around with modulation. It's really interesting that Stolper Beats has only got three screw holes. That's very odd. Okay, I'm just going to do adjust my 1U. So my thinking at the moment is my motion meter over here is going to be a mixer for my oscillators. Potentially, <laughs> I mean, because it has no no VCA control, maybe that's the wrong. Oh, I don't know. Well, maybe it's a, I don't know. It's a mixer for something anyway. Maybe it'll be a mixer between the endless and the surface. I felt like it should go over here. Now, the existence of the gliss is potentially interesting. I haven't really looked into how to work that <laughs> yet. But it could provide some performance interest. So I'm keeping that at the moment. Mm -hmm. 
So looking at this so far, I've got the polyseek first sequences. So all of my melody is going to be coming out of there. I have three channels of it. So that would be Ancronym, Pizza and Pony, I think. Then I've got the surface. And I've got Stolper Beats and Endless. And I do have a VCA. I've got some envelopes and I've got beats. I mean, it's a good it's a good place to start. It's a really good place to start. I've got some some weirdness here, which could be doing things. I've got Pamela as the clock. I've got a little bit of space potentially for some low pass gates or a malt, something else. This could be performance orientated. I've got a nice fat reverb. Got an interesting delay. You know, I've got I've got the start of something. I, I have a palette with which to play, and maybe now is the time to uh, just to sit down and start to work with it and to see to see what I get to, to see if there's anything in there that could be interesting and changeable and different and just see just see how I get on. So that's my thinking. If anything big changes, I'll let you know. Otherwise, I'm going to start working on this and I will update you when I have something interesting to say. <laughs> okay, quick update on where we are. I've been having quite a nice fiddle. Come up with some quite nice things. <laughs> so it all comes down to the Stolper beats, really. That is what's providing the, the beating heart of what's going on so far. So what I've done, I've put the surface through a mulch. One of it's going into the endless. One's going in separately. So I've got them essentially separate. <laughs> it got a bit complicated. So I've got the surface and the endless both on here. The surface is going through the endless as well in order for it to sample and grab hold of something. Those are then both That's better. Those are then both going through the Vino Echo and back into here again. That seemed to be the only way I could work it. So the motion meter is kind of being a submix for those two things coming through and then being the output of the, the two sides being mixed together to then root to the output. So it ultimately ends up being mono, but I don't really I don't really care. In a gig situation, stereo is for is for idiots. <laughs> really. So I've got the surface. which is nice. And I've got whatever Endless has grabbed, which is also nice. Also being affected, also being delayed, which means when I grab another one, there's no real interruption. See, that's grabbed quite a nice note. Now the surface has been triggered by the stalker beats out of a percussion output and the sequencer, little sequencer 7 which is running it, is also coming from the stalker beats. And that's creating this kind of odd oddness about it because it's, it's nicely interestingly pushed into a slight shuffle by using the push shuffle mode on here which is just what feels nice. I don't understand what all the things do or what all the different options are, but that to me is just feeling really nice. So I'm enjoying that. So it has a lilt to it. I'm then running Stop and Beats through the rest of the Trinity, which gives it this, whoa, this groove, man, which is just rather delicious.
Hopefully I can uh, change the percussion. to do I'd like to run the endless through a filter I'm not sure I have the space for that but that's what I'm that's sort of I'm feeling like I want to do that but now what I need to do is bring in some juicy analog sounds so that's the next stage the next stage is to make use of the polyseq and my sequences and see where that takes me But so far, I'm quite happy with this. I could listen to this for a little while and I could play with it and I could make, I could make changes and make things happen. If I bring that hi-hat back in, for instance. doing well I'm just enormously hot having been uh, working on this for the last couple of hours it's so hot in here now I just can't quite bear it so I'm gonna have to bring it to a close I think and it will have to be what it will be I mean I think it's quite nice it's quite dubby it's quite not very modular-esque perhaps I don't know I don't know I mean see what you think
That sounded better last time I did it. There's something in there somewhere. Definitely something in there somewhere. <laughs> exactly what? I'm not entirely sure. But hey, I've put it together. I'm going to take it, I'm going to play with it, I'm going to try to get brave with it and change it about to move it from uh, something which is quite solid there in the middle and just try to push it out to the edges. That's got to be the plan. That's got to be the plan. I'm going to do a little bit of cable tidying, screw it all in. <laughs> I'm going to do a couple of turning offs and turning on again because I want to be able to turn it on and for it to work. Mostly when I turn things off and then turn things on again, everything is screwed. So I need to try to work out how to get everything saved that I can, like the chords in the pianophonic, the quantizer, I can never seem to get that to be right. Little bits and pieces like that, the polyseek, just make sure that everything is as it should be. And then, heck, whatever it is, it will be something. I can always just double the tempo and go with that. So we'll see. Anyway, I'll report back after the disaster. Hmm? <laughs> Hang on a sec. This is awesome. I found something. It's awesome. So, post EMOM analysis, then, one of, one of the many awesome things about doing an EMOM is that you learn. It's a massive learning experience because things don't always go as you imagine. And I've always found that using stuff at home, in the shed, in your studio, is just not the same as actually using it in anger, in an emotional state, at the mercy of a crowd and an environment and a situation and you've had a beer <laughs> and 
it's late at night and all of those things contribute to the actual performance on the night and when it comes down to it all sorts of things happen or occur to you and the system works or doesn't in perhaps a different way than when you're sitting here close to it attentive adjusting tweaking changing little bits and pieces because the live performance element is is different you feel both bolder and more self-conscious you feel like you can push things in different directions and yet you don't want to ruin it just by repatching something you're conscious that you want the crowd to have a nice time and so you kind of ultimately default to some kind of pleasing techno as opposed to perhaps exploring more interesting and risky and dangerous avenues or do you i don't know i mean i can only talk about my own experience which is ultimately what i'm doing so how did last night go well okay well let's start there's a whole bunch of thoughts and things i have about this and what i'll do is i'm going to take you through the things that worked and things that didn't perhaps within the rack to see if that's interesting to you things that i've learned about different modules in the process of doing this but i'll start off just to say that this worked this bag the whole idea right of going down to one case going down to one case which can go into this which is an analog an analog case uh, I can't remember exactly the size of it. I think it was designed essentially for one of the, the little synths, like the Mode Electronics Cobalt or the Hydrosynth Explorer. It's that kind of size case, but it perfectly fits the Bifaco 7U. So that's awesome. I was able to carry it on my back, on my motorcycle, and it was fine. And then carry it to the gig and carry it back. It was great. It totally, totally worked. So that's a massive success. And what I hope that's going to mean is that in the future, I'm going to be able to take it to a lot more places. What I'm actually trying to get to is to go battery powered and to take this out into the wild and to make some music in nature and to do some videos doing that kind of thing. I've been wanting to do that for years. And I think I might actually, might actually be getting there. Just got to decide on a battery. That's the other thing. Anyway, that aside, so getting there was brilliant. The case was brilliant. This cover, it does squash a little bit, but I purposefully use these uh, noodle type cables from Create Audio, as well as a sprinkling of um, tendrils and other small ended uh, low profile cables, just to make sure that everything fits well. You can get cables which have massive great big plugs on them which are, are great and feely for when you put them in and out but in trying to to then pack that into a case they become problematic so the noodles the tendrils i've even got a stackable here a tip top stackable which is uh pretty good and saved me from having to take a whacking great big thing like this just to do a simple malt so the logistics of taking this to the gig were brilliant also you've got this stereo output on the back so I've got an output module here, which then routes to that, which is much easier to connect up to the in-house system than it is just having mini jack outputs or other such bits and pieces. And also there's a certain amount of focus in a single case. I mean, you know, as you've seen, I've gone through a process of trying to get this down to uh, a point that I can still make music in this smaller space. And I sort of can. I sort of can. It, it sort of worked so uh, let's have a look now I will attempt to reperform my patch from last night in a minute in a bit once I've talked you through it I'll then attempt to to show you how it worked I think perhaps <laughs> And so you can experience the full beauty of it. The thing is that by the end of my of my set, I had done a little bit of repatching and changing just to try to break it and make it a bit more interesting. So I'm essentially doing the same thing over and over again. So I will have I will try to recover it. But I'm just going to bring the camera in for the moment just to show you different bits, uh, just to give you a quick overview of of what worked and what didn't. First of all, Seb Song's Polyseek, brilliant idea. What I found is that it's really, really hard to write sequences to go in it that complement each other. Now, I am brilliant at, at writing a sequence, 
on any sequencer and playing with that one line you know do something well yeah that's pretty interesting and work with it but to create complementary sequences that's difficult particularly in the way that the polyseq works because you can't at least in my understanding of it so far you can't hear you can <laughs> you can't hear one sequence while recording another so it's almost as if in its current state you have to write everything on a different sequencer and then kind of record it in or something or write it down and then transpose it into there. So it has a few difficulties. Now I understand some of these difficulties are going to be sorted out with a new firmware which is why I've put off reviewing it for now. Um, but what I thought was going to be the solution to many things it still can be it just requires more work from me than I imagined. So I ended up using it and having a sequence in there which was fine but essentially only one and I could have run that on any old sequencer so I'm not sure that in this particular instance it helped me although it did save a bit of space because if I was going to run my eight step sequencer I would have had to run that with a um, with a quantizer and that would have taken up about sort of this much space so in that regard yes it worked I'm also learning more about it as I as I go and there are good things and bad things and things I don't understand so I need to spend more time with it it did its job it didn't inhabit the role that I thought it would in this instance but it still may it still may pianophonic yeah that kind of that kind of did its job I mean I didn't do anything particularly exciting with it I did a couple of chords Which sometimes I felt sounded like that Windows error um, noise when you do something wrong. <laughs> if I take the um, the delay down, you know that kind of thing. But hey, uh, it provided a dub kind of um, <laughs> bit of interest in there with chordal changes. Uh, the changing the chords of the pianophonic is more difficult than, than I feel it needs to be. It's the same with the poly cinematic. It's, it's interesting, it works, it's just a bit fussy in trying to uh, correctly place those chords within the memory. Uh, and then, you know, it's, it's a little distorted and I, I couldn't quite get the sound as clean as I wanted it to be. I wasn't entirely sure what I was doing yet. So yes, it played its role, it played a bit of piano, but I think I didn't use it as much as perhaps I could have done. But it provided, it definitely added something to the patch. Uh, the pizza was flipping phenomenal. <laughs> Just the greatest thing. Wow, uh, what I did with this is I plugged in, well, I plugged in a couple of things, I ended up putting the chicken in it. Crazy chicken, but I started with the gliss, this thing here. And that was just joyful, joyful, joyful every day of the week. I haven't got this plugged into uh, my system for recording just at the moment, so you're just going to have to deal with the with the camera sound, <laughs> camera mic sound, and you'll be able to hear what I did with that in the patch that I'm going to play in a minute. Pizza, brilliant. <laughs> the six eyes provided something interesting. It's a it's a weird and fascinating little thing, and I I really quite enjoyed it. Endless yes wasn't sure about it i really sort of persevered with it trying to work out how, how can this be be cool and um it was it kept bringing in these tones that were interesting and sometimes random every time i hit the button it would pull another another sound from the surface that i was running through it and yeah it was really interesting particularly at the end I, was, I kind of reduced at the end just really down to this and it just brought out these notes and it was amazing. So again, I, 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 a lot of the modules in this particular system I've only looked at briefly, but I do plan to get much deeper with them. So there's probably a lot more to discover in there. But as it was, it totally, it totally, 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 totally did the job. 
It just brings in this thing. And then takes it out and brings another one in. Sometimes it's the same note. Who knows? So that was cool. The Surface did what the Surface does and it, it was all right. Um, <laughs> sometimes it overwhelms a bit. You've got to kind of use it a bit sparingly sometimes, but using it with the decay all the way down, that seemed to work really nicely. More than anything else. Probably could have done more with it to be fair, but it was there providing something which I then brought that, brought that in and out. Uh, Trinity, the Trinity and Stolper Beats combination was quite immense. <laughs> the Trinity was much louder than I think it needed to be. I needed to work a little bit on uh, the levels within that. In fact, you know, with your three outputs here, it would work brilliantly with a molten motion meter just to control the level of the outputs because you can have them individually coming out and then mix them. Otherwise, you've got to hold, select, move a thing, change the volume here, which is doable. But a little bit more control would have been would have been good over that because the hi hats always t tend to be really really loud. But in the context of the PA within the pub, the kick was huge and a little bit overwhelming. So yeah, lots more to explore in that. It's it's really really quite interesting. Stolper Beats was solid. Uh, it gave me a whole load of uh, of patterns that worked. I'm, I'm, I'm only sort of hesitant about it because I wonder whether I can do more. Am I going to be doing the same thing every time? Uh, am I going to fall into the trap of just liking one thing and how controllable is it? How intentional is it? Or am I just randomly dialing in another hi-hat or another this, that and the other, you know? <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah, uh, interesting, but obviously I've got a lot of a lot of learning to do about all of these modules. But on the initial play, it certainly worked. I just need to, to massage the levels a bit more. Coming over here, Ancronim was playing from the Polyseek. So that was pretty simple. I decided to use uh, the percussion output to run the clock on the polyseek, which gives it this sort of slightly off kilter feel. Also got a bit of modulation running the waveform, so it runs into different things. And that is essentially it. That's it. Little sequencer running the surface. The sequencer seven is running the surface, running through this quantizer. Uh, the motion meter over here is mixing the output of both the endless processor and the surface, running that through this delay, and that's coming back in to the to another half of the motion meter in order to mix it together to put it through. <laughs> I've got both the pianophonic and the pizza going through this motion meter here, and then through the delay in order to just combine enough things. So I had enough things to mix together to go to the output. So it was a struggle ultimately having one, two, three, four, five, six different sound sources. Hmm. All of it running through the white rabbit at the end. That seemed to work completely fine. And that is, that is the thing. That is my setup. And it worked. It, it did. It certainly did the job. I had something there. It wasn't, I don't think, my most amazing performance ever. But hey, you're going to hear it in a moment. You'll be able to judge for yourself. But so that's another Emon done. I'm planning to get to, to more. I'm planning to, to, to keep massaging this, to keep working on it, keep finding things that I think are interesting in order to create sound. There was nothing in here that didn't make use of itself. Every space was used. I've got a, a couple of HP, possibly spare, for something. Uh, there's other things I could do, like I could use a smaller delay, for instance. That's a possibility. I've got a little bit of 1U space that I wasn't using. I used the Molt in here. Didn't use the Sequence of 5. 
I could use smaller drum modules in order to fit something else in. I haven't got much in the way of modulation. I've got the Quartz here from Nano, which is for either LFOs or little AR envelopes, which which is great. And I ended up only using a couple of those, so I could use more modulation going on. I use the Expert Sleepers uh, envelope here, which worked really well on whatever I was doing with the acronym going through the filter. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It was interesting. I will let you. I will let you find out for yourself now. So there you go. I hope that was interesting or helpful. If you want to perform an emom, then you'll find there's emoms all over the place. If you go to uh, Facebook and search for electronic music open mics, you will find them, and they are all over the country. Absolutely worthwhile doing because they teach you so much. They force you to. Uh, to perform they force you to grow to get better at what you're doing to analyze how things went and to change it and at the same time you've got a bunch of people who are watching who are not going to hate you <laughs> they're not going to hate what you're doing they may not love it but they also are going to be nice and encouraging because they're there doing the same sort of thing understanding what you're doing and in just enjoying the idea that we can perform live with our electronic instruments and you might meet some people you might um really like something and it should hopefully inspire you to improve your game which is which is kind of what i'm after so i hope that was helpful in the meantime get out there and make some tunes <laughs>